Should I douche my vagina? Is it okay to masturbate daily? Why can't I achieve an orgasm during sex? Have you ever had questions like these, but you were too embarrassed to ask your OBGYN? You're not alone. Many women are embarrassed to ask questions about their vaginas and their reproductive health, but you shouldn't be. Your doctor is here to help you. Hi, I'm Dr. Seher and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist. Today, we're going to break the taboo surrounding women's reproductive health and I'm going to answer five questions that you might be too embarrassed to ask your doctor. All right, let's dive into some blushworthy questions. Question number one, why does it hurt during sex? Pain during sex is called dyspareunia and it can be a real mood killer. This can occur before, during, and after penetrative intercourse and it can be caused by a variety of factors. One big reason for pain during sex is not having enough lubrication. This can be due to a decreased state of arousal. So for example, you might need a little bit more foreplay, a little bit more warming up, or it can be due to decreased estrogen levels. Estrogen plays a key role in vaginal lubrication and it also helps contribute to the health of the vaginal tissues. It's necessary to keep the walls hydrated and elastic. When estrogen is low, it can cause increased vaginal dryness and more friction during sex, which makes it painful. One way to combat this is to lube it up. You can use a water-based or silicone-based lubricant. However, if you're currently trying to conceive, be sure to use a semen-friendly lubricant. This is important because not all commercially available lubricants are optimal for maintaining a sperm-friendly environment. Some lubricants contain components that might be detrimental to the actual sperm and make it harder to reach the egg to fertilize it. Furthermore, some lubricants might actually disrupt the vaginal pH, thereby potentially impacting the movement and survivability of the sperm as they move through the female reproductive tract. Now, if you've actually confirmed with a healthcare provider that you do have low levels of estrogen, then using lubrication would be a very short-term solution and wouldn't actually help fix your hormone levels. Talk with your doctor about lifestyle changes you can make to increase your estrogen levels and to balance out your hormones. Hormone balance is important for all women, especially if you're trying to get pregnant. Furthermore, any previous trauma or injury to your vagina, and this can sometimes include childbirth, or any tightness and tension in the pelvic floor muscles can also cause pain during sex. So if that's the case, medical intervention or guidance from a pelvic floor physical therapist might be necessary. Question number two, is it okay to masturbate daily? There's absolutely nothing wrong with a little bit of self-love on a daily basis, and no, masturbation will not harm your reproductive system or affect your fertility. In fact, masturbation has been shown to reduce stress, help you sleep better, relieve menstrual cramps, improve your self-esteem and your overall body image. Now, those are some mighty claims about the benefits of masturbation. How exactly does it do these things? Well, masturbation is a great way to release endorphins. Endorphins are our feel-good hormones and they cause feelings of pleasure and relaxation. These endorphins plus other hormones associated with sexual arousals have an overall calming effect on the body. This causes a sense of well-being and can improve your sleep quality. And you heard correctly, you can add masturbation to your list of menstrual cramp remedies. A heating pad, ibuprofen, and a vibrator may be just the perfect trifecta that you never knew you needed. Orgasms increase blood flow to the uterus and this can alleviate your menstrual cramps and discomfort. They also release oxytocin and dopamine which literally act like natural painkillers. And finally, exploring your body by masturbating is a great way to develop a healthier relationship with yourself. It can help you feel more confident and it's a great way to figure out what feels good so you can communicate it to your sexual partner. This can help improve foreplay and subsequently increase your chances of achieving an orgasm. Which brings us to our next question. Question number three, why can't I reach an orgasm during sex? We love a good orgasm, and as amazing as they are, many women actually struggle to achieve climax during sex. This can be incredibly frustrating and maybe even put a strain on the relationship. After all, both parties are supposed to be experiencing pleasure and having fun. To be honest, there could be a bunch of reasons why you're not achieving an orgasm. This could be a whole separate video on its own. There can be some medical reasons such as low estrogen levels, especially during pregnancy, postpartum, and menopause. And there can be psychological factors such as anxiety, depression, or lack of self-confidence. If you're currently trying to conceive, you might actually get tired of having sex. It might feel like just another chore. One other big factor is during your menstrual cycle, you might experience a heightened sexual desire during ovulation because your body has a surge of estrogen. Your body is primed and ready for reproduction. However, during your luteal and follicular phase, you might experience decreased libido because your body knows that it's not prime baby making time. 
Now, if you have sexual desire, but you're finding it difficult to reach an orgasm with your partner, then you can try masturbating like we talked about earlier. See if you can reach an orgasm on your own. That way you can communicate it to your partner and increase your chances of achieving one together. It's important to note that an orgasm is not a requirement for getting pregnant and having a successful and healthy pregnancy. However, there is some information out there that suggests that orgasms might help you become pregnant a little bit quicker. This is because when you have an orgasm, your pelvic floor muscles contract, and this causes a pumping effect, which helps the sperm move up a little bit more effectively into the reproductive tract. Orgasms also release oxytocin, which is a happy hormone that can reduce the stress that is sometimes associated with trying to become pregnant. Also, don't be afraid to throw in some sex toys to aid in your mission of achieving the big O. Many women are unable to climax with just penetrative sex alone, so you might want to invest in a vibrator or some kind of toy to stimulate your clitoris. Just be sure not to insert random objects into your vagina. Items such as cucumbers, carrots, and bananas, as tempting as they might seem, can actually cause some infections and cause a weird discharge or smell coming from your vagina. Speaking of smell, this leads to our next question. Number four, why does my vagina smell weird? There's nothing more alarming than going into the bathroom and smelling something unfamiliar down there. And it's even worse when it's accompanied by a weird discharge. First and foremost, each vagina has its own individual unique smell and there are normal fluctuations of discharge that occur throughout the menstrual cycle. Your vagina does not smell like a garden of roses and it never actually needs to. It's completely normal for it to smell a little bit tangy, a little bit sour, earthy, or somewhere in between. The smell of your vagina can change based on the different good bacteria that are present. It also changes during different phases of your menstrual cycle, indicating when you're close to ovulation. During ovulation, your estrogen levels peak to maintain healthy vaginal flora and this can slightly change the smell. Comment down below if you'd like for us to make a video in the future simply on that topic alone. Let's also debunk the idea that eating certain foods can make your vagina smell weird or different. The food that you eat is not likely to actually affect your vaginal odor. You can't blame that bean burrito for your vagina smelling a little funny. Now, if your vagina actually does smell weird, here are some reasons why. If your vagina smells a little bit fishy, it could be due to the fact that it's fighting off an infection such as bacterial vaginosis or trichomoniasis. Bacterial vaginosis is one of the most common sources of abnormal discharge, smell of discharge in women, and it is usually accompanied by an off-white or gray discharge. Trichomoniasis is usually accompanied by a large amount of thin discharge that can range from a clear color to yellow or green. These infections can affect your ability to get pregnant because they cause inflammation and they can potentially spread to your upper reproductive tract. For this reason, it's important to pay attention and receive prompt medical care. Now, if your vagina smells like there's something dying or rotten in there, then you might have forgotten to take out your last tampon. Now, if that is the case, you definitely need to go visit a medical professional to get it taken out. Don't try to remove it yourself because small pieces of debris can be left behind and this can cause a life-threatening infection. Now, if your vagina just smells only slightly offensive and you don't have any weird discharge or weird symptoms, then you might just need to cleanse it properly. So speaking of cleansing your vagina, Question number five, should I douche my vagina? Douching is a common practice amongst women, even though many healthcare professionals have kind of spoken out against it in the recent years. Essentially, douching is a man-made process of cleaning out the vagina with a water mixture. Oftentimes, women will douche when they think that their vagina smells a little weird or there's some strange discharge, but as I mentioned, there are certain smells that could signal an infection and douching would not be helpful. Another reason that people do their vaginas is they think that it's supposed to smell like flowers and roses and there's this inherent belief that vaginas are dirty, but that is far from the truth. The vagina actually doesn't need help cleaning itself because it is a self-cleaning of it. Isn't that awesome? But you know what's not awesome? Experiencing an overgrowth of bacteria in your vagina because of douching. Douching can actually remove the good bacteria that's in our vagina and then we're left with more bad bacteria. Frequent douching is actually associated with increased risk of infections, endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancy, and fertility difficulties. So ditch the douche and let your vagina do what she already knows to do. Whew, is anybody feeling hot after all these questions? It's completely understandable that you might feel embarrassed or shy to talk about these topics, especially because as women, we've been told all our lives to keep these things private. Please know that your medical providers get asked all sorts of weird questions and they're here to help you. Almost no topic is taboo. 
to make asking these questions easier, you can try to jot them down on your phone and read them out loud to your doctor. You can even begin by saying, hey, I have an embarrassing question to ask you, and this can warn your doctor, and I'm sure it'll make you feel a little bit better about it. But that's going to wrap up the end of this video. If there are any other questions that you're too embarrassed to ask your doctor but we haven't addressed it yet, drop them down below and we can make a video about it in the future. Be sure to like this video and to subscribe to Inido in order to learn more about your reproductive health. You can also follow us on Instagram at Inido Fertility. And remember, don't be shy about your health. Your doctor is here to help you and you deserve to be empowered about your body.